Hands up, who's ready? Then Grace, let's go. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go with chapter 14, lesson number two. Moving on in the proofs chapter to look at direct proofs. Now, once again, before we jump in to this lesson, you need to be familiar with the different number sets. Ian, do you know them? Yes. Liam, do you know them? Yes. Matthew, do you know them? No. Then Matthew, just for you, this is the different number sets. Remember, you need to know what N, W, Z, Q and R represent. We've been over this in the first lesson in this chapter and we've been over it previously in the Advanced Higher Course, but just make sure you know that Z would stand for integers, R would be your real numbers, and so on. So moving on with direct proof, the second lesson in the proofs chapter. So a direct proof, what it does is it takes an original statement and you've got to prove it's true. And you do that using known facts or manipulations such as things like the rules of algebra. The following definitions also help with direct proofs. So a lot of the time you may have to have n as an even number. But you know all even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, they're all going to be in the 2 times table. So what you do is you say n equals 2k for some integer k. Because if n was equal to 2k, well it would definitely be in the 2 times table, meaning it would definitely be an even number. A lot of the time you may have to have n as an odd number and if n was an odd number well for that what you do is you would let n equal 2k first of all because you know if you double k you're going to get an even number but you know an odd number would always be one up from that or one below that so you would write that n would equal 2k plus one or 2k minus one because if you double a number and add on one you're always going to get an odd number and a lot of the time you may have to prove that n is divisible by, for example, 3. And if it's going to be divisible by 3, well, it's going to have to be something that's in the 3 times table. So you would say that n would equal, and all numbers in the 3 times table are going to be 3 times something. So you would say n would equal 3k. If n was divisible by 4, you would write n equals 4k. If it was divisible by 7, you would say n equals 7k. All of these for some integer k. Let's look at the first example then. So given x is an even number, prove that x squared is an even number. So using a direct proof. Well, we start off, we are told that x is an even number. And we know that if x is an even number, then we would let x equal, well, it's going to be 2k for some integer k. So k just belongs to z. k is going to be an integer. If you take an integer k and you double it, you know you're always going to get an even number because all even numbers would be in the 2 times table. That is why you would let x equal 2k. We are asked to prove that x squared will be an even number. So now we need to think, right, well, what would x squared be equal to? Well, if x is equal to 2k, then x squared would equal 2k all squared. This means that you're squaring the 2 and you're squaring the k, or you'd have 2k times 2k, so 2 times 2 would give you the 4, and k times k would give you k squared. To prove that that's going to be an even number, we need it in the form of 2 times something, because all even numbers are going to be in the 2 times table. So what we have to do is we take out 2 as a factor. Don't take out anything like 4, make sure you take out 2. So you would have 2 times something. And the something that you're left with, well, it's going to be 2 times the 2k squared. Because if you have 2 times 2k squared, it gives you this 4k squared. And we know now, because it's in the form of 2 times something, it's going to be in the 2 times table, meaning then it's going to be even. So we can say then that when x is an even number, we had it up here as an even number, we had it as 2k. Well, what we've got here is x squared as 2 times something, which means that is also going to be even. So we've proved that. Yeah! High five. Next one. Example two. Use direct proof to show that the product of any odd and any even integer is an even integer. So to start off, we are looking for the product of any odd and any even integer. So we need both an even integer and an odd integer. So 
An even integer, remember an even integer will be one that's going to be in the two times table. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and so on. So it can be written as two times something. Which means then that our even integer, we can let that equal to k. For our odd integer, well, what we do with that is we take our even integer 2k and we plus or minus 1. Because if you add or subtract 1 from an even number, you get an odd number. However, what it says is it's the product of any odd and any even integer. If I chose our odd integer to be 2k plus 1, well, they would be consecutive numbers. Because it's just going to be 1 up from that even integer. It would be the number straight after it. But I don't want that. I want any odd and any even integer, so I'm going to choose a different letter. I'm going to let the odd integer be 2n plus 1, with both n and k belonging to z. An integer, the set of integers. The product then, what does the product mean? So two times them. Good, so let's multiply them together. So we're going to have the 2k times the 2n plus 1. You know, with that, really, you would write it without the time sign. You've got 2k bracket, 2n plus 1. Therefore, multiplying out the brackets will give you the 2 times 2 is 4. We're we'll multiplying that by k and by n, so 4kn plus. And if you've got 2k times 1, well, that's just going to be 2k. We are wanting to show, we're wanting to prove that that product is an even integer. And remember, when it's even, it can be written as 2 times something. So what we can do here is we can take out the 2 as a common factor, leaving us then with 2 times the 2kn plus k. But because we've got this in the form of 2 times something, well, it means then it's going to be even. So you can finish off by saying that since that 2kn plus k is an integer, well, if we double it, then we're going to end up with something that is even. So the 2 bracket 2kn plus k must be even. Therefore, the product of any odd and any even integer will be an even integer. Woo! Example 3, let n be a natural number. Use direct proof to show that if n is a multiple of 9, then so is n squared. So... As it says here, to be a multiple of 9, n must also be divisible by 9. Which means then that we are going to let n equal. Well, if it's, divis if it's a multiple of 9, it's divisible by 9, so we can write it as 9 times something. So I'm going to let n equal 9m, where m is just going to be a natural number. N squared then, that's what we're wanting to look at. We want to prove that N squared will also be divisible by 9. So, if we know N is equal to 9M, then N squared will equal that 9M all squared. We would have 9M times 9M. Well, 9 times 9 is 81, and M times M gives you M squared. So we're squaring the 9 and squaring the M. We want to show that that is a multiple of 9. How do we do it? Well, we have to write it in the form of 9 times something. So we're going to take out a factor of 9, meaning we could say that 81m squared will be equal to 9 times, and in brackets you would have 9m squared. And because we have 9 times something, well, we know that therefore will be divisible by 9. Therefore, we have proved that statement to be true. So we can finish off by saying that n squared is a multiple of 9. We've got that here. That's what we finished off with. So the statement must be true. Woo! Example 4, using direct proof, show that if 7 is added to the square of an odd integer, the answer is divisible by 4. So how do we start this one off? Well, we need an odd integer. So for an odd integer, we know that that's going to be of the form 2 times something plus or minus 1. So I'm going to choose 2n minus 1. And n is going to be an integer. We have to add 7 to the square of an odd integer, which means then we're going to take this odd integer, we're going to square it. So we're going to have the 2n take away 1 in brackets squared, and we're going to add on 7. Let's go through this and multiply out the brackets. So the 2n take away 1 squared means we'd have 2n take away 1 times the 2n take away 1, and we're still adding 7 on the end. Multiply out the brackets, so 2n times 2n will give you 4n squared. We will have take away 2n, and then take away 2n, which is take away 4n, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. 
And again, we've still got plus 7 on the end. From here, you can simplify that because in the end, you've got a 1 add 7. So we could just write that as 4n squared. Take away 4n plus 8. How do we prove that is divisible by 4? Take out a common factor. Perfect. From here, you can take out a common factor of 4 which means you could write that as 4 bracket n squared take away n plus 2. And because it is of the form 4 times something, we know it's going to be divisible by 4. We can easily divide that by 4 because there's a 4 right here. So we can say then that since the 4 bracket n squared take away n plus 2 is a multiple of 4, then the statement will be true. Yeah! Try these questions in the Unit 3 booklet from page 77 all the way to page 78. Check your answers as you go. Any problems, let me know. Have fun. See ya. Bye. Woo. Yeah.